Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. And welcome once again to PSA Hell. <laughs> Last week's conclusion to the Tandy Computer Whiz Kids was technically a PSA comic because, well, like all of them are, and schedule reorganization put the two together, but it's time for a proper PSA. After all, the real purpose of the Tandy Computer Whiz Kids was to sell Tandy products. We need a comic specifically designed for a message, and that's where today's comic comes in. Unfortunately, I don't really have any interesting backstory or the like on it, but I find it weird that much like Captain America's battle against the asthma monster, this is a two-issue PSA. We're only covering the first one, which was made in cooperation with the FBI. That's the kind of interesting historical tidbits you come to this show for, especially when it's written right at the top of the comic. So yeah, let's just dig into Captain America Goes to War Against Drugs. The cover is decent enough, featuring Captain America throwing his mighty shield and smashing the drugs letters in half with it. Oh, that was a quick comic. Why does the real war on drugs have such a problem getting done? We also see a bunch of, presumably, young people cheering him on. Well, I say cheering him on, only these three are into it. The other three are too busy listening to that damn rock music to care about Captain America's war against rocks shaped into the word drugs. You know, rock is the real gateway drug. I mean, just saying, this kid on the cover looks kinda stoned. We open somewhere high above the Earth as a creature watches a screen with Captain America leaping through some glass. First page and our drug PSA has aliens in it. We're in for a ride, people. Ah, there he is, the one I told you about. The human called Captain America. I believe he is about to perform serious breakage upon some other humans. Watch carefully, this may be educational. Man, alien SAT prep is weird. Cap has leapt into a drug lab and offers them a chance to surrender. They refuse, so he starts kicking their asses. Come on, you jerks, we can take this guy! I mean, we're a bunch of no-name drug dealers and he was the last man standing against Thanos. Clearly, we've got the advantage here. You see that shield of his? We'll shoot where it ain't. Brilliant strategy! You magnificent bastard, I read your book! Cap tosses his shield at him. That might be a problem. You see, as others have noted, my shield tends to be everywhere. One of the many laws of physics it defies is Euclidean geometry. In fact, people are always shouting observations about me. He's only one man. He's got no superpowers. He's just some old fossil. That's America's ass. And many others I'd share with you if you were still conscious. Although admittedly, I don't know if you'd really be interested in he couldn't have eaten all the donuts in the break room. Except I did. After Cap hands the drug dealers over to the FBI, the aliens wonder how they should proceed. After all, we have been assigned to determine whether or not the Earth is a worthwhile conquest for the Tizin. What shall our report be? We're pretty sure there's only one superhero on the planet, and he spends most of his time lecturing drug dealers about things he's heard them say about him. 
The Tazin commander compares humanity to another race they had wiped out, one they had originally intended to subjugate, but were forced to destroy them because of how much they resisted conquest and fought to the death. He argues that sometimes wiping out a species like they had to do once is so bothersome. And I sense those same qualities in humans. The joy of life, and undying hope, and a determination to fight for both. They also have created potato cakes and digital watches, both inventions that make them worthy of survival. The commander suggests that since humans willingly addict themselves to drugs, that it might be a strategy to use against them. Although they can raise themselves to greatness, they are still capable of dragging themselves down again. I mean, did you see that trailer for cats? We shall conduct an experiment. I shall select four young people from a cross-section of humanity. Four special individuals who have the potential to be major contributors to mankind. People with special skills and abilities who could be influential if allowed to develop. I don't know, guys. I think it might have been a mistake for Hasbro to reboot the Power Rangers movies so soon again. The commander says that if half of them are swayed into destroying themselves with drugs, then their resolve can't be strong enough to resist them, and they can try to conquer them. I mean, it kind of makes sense that aliens would be involved in the story made with the help of the FBI. We cut to a kid named Keith Wilson, who's writing a letter to Captain America. Keith is a member of the Teen Brigade, that group of teenagers who we briefly saw in the Avengers origin story, which helps explain why Cap is reading his letter in particular. He's telling Cap about his best friend, Mitch, who has serious potential for being picked up by the Major Leagues, but lately he's been having trouble. Out of breath, his mind wanders easily, and it might have something to do with the drugs that he saw Mitch take from a shady guy in a hat. Admittedly, he didn't see any drugs, but I think we know where this is going. Since he has no proof of anything bad, he can't go to any other authorities. Plus, he doesn't want to get the kid in trouble. As such, he asks Cap to look into it whenever he's not trying to save the world. Later, we see Mitch talking to himself on a street corner, anxious about the big game tomorrow, and how everyone else is counting on him, and he never wanted all this pressure. Why can't I be like everybody else? You can, Mitch. You too can be the sniper from Team Fortress 2. He offers him some more drugs to take the edge off, but Mitch is uncertain because of how tired he got after using them. Where you get this stuff anyway? Same place everybody else does. Out of spice, supplied by aliens, you know, just like everybody else. You wanted to be just like everybody else, right? Well, everybody does this stuff. Trust me, everybody does it. That's why I'm giving it to you at night in a shady deal, as opposed to just bumming one off your friends. Also... I wear my sunglasses at night. The coaches and all your friends, they just hang around you to feel like big shots because they know you'll be famous. Me? I'm unselfish. I'm your only real friend, Mitch. You're lucky we met. Mitch turns to acknowledge that, but the drug dealer has vanished. Ugh, not being there for him and listening to him when he's feeling down. A real drug dealer friend would be there for him emotionally, alien drug pusher. At the game, Mitch does well, though his teammates showering him with praise isn't helping the pressure he's feeling. He tosses the ball and socks the batter right in the head. Man, what a crappy baseball helmet he's wearing. One hit from a baseball and it knocks the guy out cold. Captain America arrives as the crowd watches over the fallen batter. Look, some nut in a Captain America costume. No, it's him. It's really him. Nah, it's no big deal. To get some extra cash, Cap got a side gig as the team mascot. To get the attention of a passing cop car, Cap throws his shield at them. Yeah, that's pretty much how things worked before we had cell phones. Mitch apologizes and says his head was messed up. Wanna tell us why your head was messed up, Mitch? Is there something you've been putting into it? What? You were high before the game? You moron! You're supposed to get high after the game! It's a celebratory thing, you dumbass! You come into a game throwing fastballs and your brain is fried? You could have killed someone! Maybe you have! Okay, to be fair, I would have more assumed that getting high would have made him actually worse at playing. Not strong enough to give someone a concussion even when they're wearing a helmet. As the player is taken away in an ambulance, Keith blames himself over what happened, not knowing who to turn to for this sort of thing. The PSA bit comes in with Cap pointing out that there are plenty of places in the yellow pages under alcohol or drug abuse he could have called, or a national toll-free number. But at least you took the first step, son. 
You contacted somebody. Admittedly, given the amount of fan mail I received, it could have been months before I saw that, and you should have considered that. But hey, it's the thought that counts. And you clearly didn't think. His parents and coach blamed themselves as well, realizing that they would have just yelled at him or that they put too much pressure on him, but Cap says they need to just go to him and show their support. However, in his fear, Mitch has run away. He runs into the drug dealer again, who offers him more drugs. However, Mitch is just pissed off and punches him, which shatters the guy's face like glass. Oh dear. <laughs> oh god, I'm still tripping balls right now! He runs away, having seen the alien's true face, but runs right into the opposing baseball team from before, who are still carrying bats for some reason. Well, how's this for luck? It's Mr. Potato Head, the one who maybe killed Ricky with his goofball fastball. Okay, I haven't seen Toy Story 3 or 4. Did Mr. Potato Head become known for throwing fastballs? When he claims that it was a nearby monster or alien who gave him the drugs, they of course don't buy it and attack. However, Cap shows up to stop them, and apparently they are so friggin' enraged by what happened that they actually try to attack Captain Friggin' America! You can't stop us! There's four of us! And not only that, but I'm on the school boxing team! So? He punched Hitler! So yeah, this douchebag takes a swing at Cap, who naturally just catches the fist and forces his hand back because he's Captain Frickin' America! And besides, you're just one old man! Ah, but I have the strength of 20 men! Maybe more! America, fuck yeah. yeah, they run off pretty quickly after that, Cap warning them to leave Mitch alone or he'll be back. Mitch, apparently still on a trip because he suddenly seems to realize he's in a PSA, starts ranting at Cap. You're gonna give me the whole drug talk now, right? Gonna throw stats at me, show me charts, the whole bit? Well, go ahead! I'm ready for it! Are you sure? It's pretty tough to hear. I mean, there's a whole song and dance number with the Muppet Babies and Alvin and the Chipmunks and everything. Oh, I've heard all the bits, seen the commercials. I mean, the one with the guy who turns into a snake still gives me nightmares. But yeah, he wants Cap to give him the whole speech. Okay, here it is. We're on your side. We actually think you should be taking more drugs. Like, seriously, kid, if drugs gave you that kind of an arm, we can weaponize that. Mitch explains how down he was feeling because of all the pressure put on him, and he just wanted to be like normal people. But Cap explains that everyone has some sort of gift or talent. Drugs just destroy it. And as for feeling down and unhappy, that's normal. Everybody feels that way. No one can or should feel happy all the time. That wouldn't be normal. Yeah, but considering the depths he went to, it might be wise to pursue counseling. He could suffer from a form of depression, Cap. Just saying. It was an alien monster that gave me the stuff, you know. But you probably don't believe me. Kid, I once teamed up with living sapient toothpaste. You'd be surprised what I'll believe. Mitch declares that regardless of anything else, he's never gonna mess with drugs again, and Cap reassures him that there are plenty who will back him on that, who are waiting for him back at the coach's office. Cap thinks Mitch has a bright future ahead of him, but also that he was just imagining the alien drug pushers, though. And so our comic ends with him spotting the shattered human mask on the ground before looking up at the night sky, wondering about it. Man, the scrolls have really lost their touch. Anyway, this comic is surprisingly okay. I mean, the alien drug dealer thing is goofy as all hell, but the actual execution isn't too bad. It helps that it seems to be self-aware of the problems of PSA comics reading off dry statistics, and instead just gives a compelling narrative why someone would turn to drugs and offers reassurance that those who love him will back him if he'll change. The premise itself concerning the aliens is... Well, silly, of course, but hey, comics are a silly, silly thing sometimes, and frankly, it's nice that the comic doesn't presume the audience is stupid, even though all the villains are. Seriously, high school boxing team versus Captain America. Come on, dude, you can't be that idiotic. Next time, we break away from books with a regular narrative and instead talk about a silly trend of comic books that's not really done as much anymore. Swimsuit issues.
We shall conduct an experiment. I shall select four young people from a cross-section of humanity. We shall see whether they can be swayed into self-destruction. Yes, this plot for season five of The Good Place is perfect!